Hey everybody, this is Ed Bauman, edited for TV. I'm going to be going over my Stranger Things refill, which I created about two years ago, right after the uh, first season of Stranger Things. Um, and this is a song I recreated off the main theme from Stranger Things. So let's take a quick listen at what we're going to be going over today. So, one of the first things I want to show you, let me adjust the size of these windows here. Uh, first thing, um, when I use Reason, I am really, um, I really don't like the um, having to have all these windows in the same, uh, all closed up, and then having to use function four, five, and six, I think it is. Let's see, window, five, six, seven. Um, I like using the command key and then the tilde key, which cycles through all three uh, windows just by using the same uh, same key modifier arrangement, command plus tilde. And I find that much faster than uh, trying to remember function five, six, seven, and uh, usually takes two hands because I can't do that with one hand very easily. Um, all right, so every time I do a cover song like this, what I usually start with is I will download um, a reference track, and I throw that into my Reason file after I find the proper tempo. For this particular song, I found that it was 84 BPM. So I'll turn the click on, and I'll play the, I'll line it up, I turn snap off, and I will be able to adjust this thing, the reference track, until I line it up perfectly on the beat. And so uh, if we take a listen at what's going on here, you'll hear that it's in tempo with 84. Start at the beginning. Now, if it w wasn't uh, in time, since this is just a reference track, what I do is I will zoom in. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll zoom in. And I get my razor tool. Shortcut is R on your uh, keyboard. And I will slice it if it happens to be off a little bit. So I'll slice it there, say. And then I use the Q key to go back to the normal arrow tool. And then when you do that, you can grab the slice that you just made and move it anywhere you want. And so you'd line it up so it is on the beat. And a lot of times you can see these uh, attack transients and you know that that's where it needs to fall on the beat. But this is all lined up, and so I don't need to do that. The other thing I do usually on every song is I build a dummy track called a structure track. So reference is the original song. Structure is um, just so I know where I am in the song, so I can quickly... Let me turn on snap. So I can quickly snap to the verse, the bridge, the chorus, the guitar solo. Wherever I need to be in the song, I can quickly jump to that section. And uh, as you can see, I always keep the reference track muted. And most of the time when I'm done with the track, I'll delete the reference track. Um, but for this particular song, I kept it because it's such a small recording. Um, and I always wanted to reference back to it. So, But you can at any time. Uh, leave it on mute and just hit solo. And you can hear the original. Turn off click and then turn off solo, it puts that track back to mute and brings your tracks back in. So, um, that being said, let's take a look at the individual tracks on this song. Um, 
we've got different volume levels, of course, um, on this uh, sequence. But when I send the, uh, when you order the Stranger Things refill, uh, everything is at a normal 100% volume, uh, meaning 0 dB. So, for example, this one, 0 dB. And um, in the rack, my default for any refill that I do, that fourth uh, combinator knob is volume. And as you can see, uh, all these are set to 100%. Uh, so that will be 0 dB. And it roughly puts all these patches at a good volume for you to work with. But in this particular sequence, uh, these sounds don't need to be full volume, which is why uh, they're a little distant, especially like things like thin strings. That's way in the background. Minus 21 dB. It's hardly there. Uh, Rezo Arp, that's pretty far back. So anyway, um, let's dig in. And the first thing we hear in this song is a track called Minor Sweep, which I believe does an E minor. So we're playing the minor sweep pad, which in the rack is right here, minor sweep. And you can see um, for this refill and all the refills I make, I map all four combinator knobs, all four uh, but combinator buttons, and the pitch wheel and mod wheel. And sometimes the sustain pedal does weird things other than sustain. Uh, other times, um, uh, um, your velocity will change things. I don't often use aftertouch. I do have one keyboard that does that, but it's such a rare thing that uh, I don't program aftertouch into my patches. So, minor sweep. There's your E minor. You can do things like add sparkle. Now, all this stuff is not in the original song, obviously, but uh, by default, these patches load with... Um, they're, they're set up in the way that they're used in the cover song. So um, there is no add sparkle in the original. I just added that for this refill. And sparkle shimmer, you can change filter, attack, release. You can kick in the shaper to give it a bit of distortion, I believe. Yeah, so there's some distortion on the, on the patch. Um, and also that I do in all my refills is I always set up the knobs to be either... For example, almost always, looks like there's a little variant there, but around 50%, 0%, or 100%. And so that way, you can get things back to normal um, if you just um, put things roughly back to where they were when you saw them. I mean, you can always load the patch back in, but uh, by default, I try to aim for 0, 50, or 100%. So it, it's okay or easy to see that visually and get back to where you were roughly. So um, this patch. Uh, and if you open this up, you can see that, as you'll see in this whole refill, Usually it's a mixer, a Thor, and an RV7000 reverb. Um, I won't go through too many details about, you know, specifically what, you know, filter I'm using and why. I mean, I, I could go over stuff all day long. Um, but uh, I, if you want to know more about programming Thor, let me know. I've been thinking about uh, getting back into doing some online training, and that's one of the... Uh, the first things I'd love to use to go over about basic synthesis because it's a very well laid out synth that has all the basics covered plus uh, a ton of other things. So it's a good uh, synth to learn on. Um, so that is minor sweep. And uh, next up, I believe in the list of things here is the Rezo Arp. So let's take a listen to what that does. So it's that uh, arpeggiating sound. And so let's take a look and see what makes up that sound in the rack. There's the Rezo Arp, open it up. It's a mixer, it's a Thor, it's an RV7000. It's actually two Thors, I believe, yep. Yeah. And then it's an RPG8 doing the arpeggiation stuff. And so there's stuff that you can do, of course, as always, you can change things. Arp half speed. 
arp doing three octaves instead of just the normal one octave of notes. You can turn on a delay. Down up, or up down is in the center. You can do just down, or just up. Turn off the reverb. So all sorts of things that you can do uh, in this patch uh, to get it away from the norm as it comes when you load it up. And I'll undo these changes here. Next up in the rack or in the sequence lanes is the primary drive. Now this is the one that everyone recognizes, the Stranger Things theme. Uh, of course, this is what we hear really when we hear the song. And I should do a little disclaimer here. I mean, this is what I'm hearing. I know those notes are right. Uh, but as far as the patch goes, eh, I may have given it a little bit more beef than the original. If you go back to the reference track. Yeah, it's a slightly different patch. They got more of a square wave thing going on. I gave it a little more thickness with uh, probably some sawtooth waves. Let's take a look and see what's in the rack here. Primary drive, show devices. Um, yeah, I got a sawtooth, a sawtooth, and a sawtooth. Power in the sawtooth. Um, opens up with the mod wheel. And again, a lot, a lot of variables here that you can change. Uh, the knobs and buttons do all sorts of things. I did use a lot of shaper in this refill just to give a easy way to add some distortion to these sounds. So that's the primary drive, and that does the same thing to the whole song, even though the bass is changing. And that's a low end sound. Uh, there is another p patch in the song, another track, which is playing uh, the, the power bass right here. We're going to get to that in a second. Uh, and that is the actual bass note. And this primary drive, despite how low it is, uh, low octave, uh, it is not the. Um, the bass and the, the low of the song. So at the primary drive, we have a kick, which is not a sample. It's an actual Thor. Sort of a heartbeat thing going on there. And if you open up kick, you'll see that it is just a Thor. And as is, there is no reverb, but I probably add it with... Uh, I may have added it with uh, something that I programmed here. I'm not positive. So, I mean, how creative can you get with a kick? It's a kick. So the, uh, the, the settings here do some things and definitely worth playing around with because there are some variables there. I programmed it for a while. So it does do something more than just kick sounds. After the kick, we've got the power bass. And this is what I was talking about that actually has the low end of the song. And I'm hearing three octaves in there. So... Let's take a look. Oh, and over here later, I play two notes here, here in six octaves, possibly if they're far enough apart. Looks like they're pop probably two notes apart, or two uh, full octaves. So eh, you're probably hearing four or five octaves in there because there's overlap, I'm sure. So there's two notes, and you'll hear three octaves on each note. So that's six potentially. But in the power bass patch, which is where. There it is. Power bass, uh, mixer, reverb, Thor, one Thor. And so uh, oscillators one and two are going through filter one, and oscillator three is going through filter two. And they both pass through to the amp and into filter three. There is no filter three. Little chorus, no delay, and it goes to the output. And like everything else, whoops. Like everything else, there's lots of programming here. There's a chorus. 
some portamento. So lots to play with in that patch. Um, I don't think polyphonic was on, was it? Uh, next in here is chordal hits. It is a, let's see what this is. Yeah, so that's the chords that sort of, they work well with the primary drive. Well, it all works good together, right? So chordal hits. Surprise, surprise, a mixer, a reverb, and a Thor. Who knew? And now here's the wavetable oscillator, which is a great oscillator inside Thor. It has some very, very cool uh, options inside of it. And for this particular patch, it's doing, let's see. Ah, you know, that might be an add-on from the, um, when you start deviating from the, uh, the normal patch here. Uh, vocalize. So there is oscillator three. And so there's lots of things to do inside this uh, patch. Lots of variables to play with. Uh, after chordal hits comes the resonant choir. And this I was leaning towards using a sample, but uh, I really wanted to try to pull it off with just Thor. And it's not bad. It is a, um, and the secret to that is, of course, the filter, which is the formant filter. Let's put it back to where I had it. So there's two Thors in here. Um, there's a multi-oscillators, three multi-oscillators here. I'm only using one, but there's probably some, st in the default I'm using one, there's probably some stuff going on in the uh, combi knobs and uh, buttons that change that. But uh, the form and filter is a secret behind this thing. That's what gives it that uh, vocal type of sound. So I think those multi-oscillators probably kick in here with lower men and upper women. So that is Resonant Choir. Let's get that back to normal. After Resonant Choir, we've got Resonant Drop, Res Drop. And that's just one hit, I believe. Oh wait, I was looking at the wrong track. So these are chords. And it's just a, a filter sweep, a resonant filter sweep. Oops, still in the choir. You can see it's a state variable filter. It's one multi-oscillator, and the envelope amount is pretty high, and it's following this envelope here. And that RV7000 adds a lot of that nice warmth to it. And uh, soften. They soften? Yeah, soften. Slow attack. Ah, sample and hold. SNH sample and hold. That is with the uh, this uh, random waveform changing the frequency of the filter. So pretty cool stuff. Next up in the sequence is the warbling squares, which is probably pulse width modulation, and that sounds like this.
and if you open it up you can see same as the last parts same as the last patches uh, a Thor a mixer a reverb you can get a lot of mileage out of a Thor a mixer and a reverb um, two analog oscillators slightly detuned they are both on the square wave oscillator and so you adjust the pulse width via an LFO Looks like I'm adjusting uh, LFO one's going to oscillator one, LFO two is going to oscillator one and two. So I'm adjusting pulse width as well as uh, pitch. That's a very subtle thing. Oop, still on the other patch. Cool stuff. Love the old analog sounds. Next up in line is the Sparkle Hit, which, let's see, that comes in one spot here, right back at measure six. And it's a subtle thing. Again, a lot of little subtle things in this uh, cover song. And every time it hits, it's slightly different. Um, there's some random stuff going on here. Uh, you know what this is? This is great. This is um, the Wavetable Oscillator, which I love. I just said that earlier, right? <laughs> um, this is the Square Harmonics, which does some wild stuff. Great stuff to change in that patch. Lots of fun. Whoops. Uh, we've also got... Next up is the whistle sound. Which is just in the middle part. Right here in the middle of what I call the bridge. Let's hear it in context. And it's a whistle sound, and that's probably a... Th Thor that uh, is using the noise oscillator. Well, I'm sure it's a Thor. Uh, it's probably uh, the noise oscillator in Thor. Yep, there's a noise oscillator. And uh, the noise oscillator itself is probably making a pitch. Yep, and then oscillator one helps it a bit. It's it's a soft thing, but it does add a little bit of breath to the sound. Without the assistance of oscillator one. And that's the whistle. I keep doing that. Tab. Uh, white noise. Oh, what more can you say about white noise? It's a white noise. And where is that in this song? White noise. It is... It's probably like a whoosh sound. Starts fading in right here. And then probably opens up right there. You can see the wave. Yep. And that is made from... Two white noise oscillators. Uh, looks like only one is engaged right now. There's probably some stuff going on in the programming where it kicks in the secondary one. Yeah, right there. When you click the uh, combinator button 2, you can see it kicks on sending oscillator 3 to filter 2. When you turn button 2 on and off. And there's a little change in the amp envelope as well. Next up, we've got the rasp, which was named after um, when a drummer takes their stick and rasps it against rasps against the edge of a cymbal. And when you listen to this in and of itself, it sounds nothing like that. But in the context of the song, I called it rasp. Uh, and in the context of the song, it sounds like this. Very 
short, very short little thing it does there. And rasp in the rack. If you look at that, it looks like two noise oscillators and a multi oscillator. And um, again, lots of variables to play with up there. If you buy this refill, you'll have a lot of fun with all these patches. After Rasp comes Hertz Buzz, which uh, I made off of a cover I did from a song from the Matrix uh, movies. And uh, it's like a very high-pitched thing. Almost sounds like... Um, um, they use that in movies to uh, make your head hurt. They do that a lot of times when... Uh, someone uh, is involved in like an explosion and they get thrown back and they lose their hearing they'll muffle all the dialogue when people are yelling at them and they put that really high-pitched whistle in there almost like uh you're going through a concussion <laughs> no laughing matter but so that's hertz buzz and it's very brief in the uh cover version it's just a little... Yeah, right there. Very soft. And then we got uh, Thin Strings, which is very low in the mix. So if you listen to the original, it is there. It is just very low in the mix. Here's the original. can hear it in your right ear so that is uh, thin strings and I'm sure it's just a uh, probably going through the um, high pass filter yep yeah, her notch filter and it's set very high so you're really cutting out all the lows of this patch all, a lot of lows out of the the uh, oscillator very thin sounding. And then last but not least in the track is the bender, which is a very quick thing. And that is right here. And it is lots of things going on here. Probably the way it is, it doesn't use all that. Uh, but when you start playing with the buttons I programmed and the knobs adds more stuff So that is Stranger Bender, and it does do a pitch bend. It's automated. You can see the green outline there. Um, but yeah, collectively, this is the Stranger Things theme song. And uh, it does continue the, the reference track I got uh, online. It continues past the end here. And it keeps going. But that is uh, my cover of Stranger Things. And you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16 patches. And uh, I'll put the link to purchase this. It's pretty cheap. Um, and these uh, patches are a lot of fun to play with and can go way beyond what uh, I did here with the cover version. There's a lot you can do with them. And uh, do me a favor. Uh, hit like if you like this. Also, subscribe to my channel. Tell your friends to come here and check it out. I'm going to be doing more and more videos uh, coming up in the next few months uh, because because uh, I want to and people have asked. And so I'm going to start doing it more and more. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment down below. 
and I'll try to answer as quickly as I can if I'm not out and about in the San Francisco Bay Area doing uh, some sort of AV project somewhere. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.